You play this priest because you are a disciple of the light, carefully mending your teammates with holy... <coughs> okay, enough with the cringe roleplay. No, we know why you play disc in PvP. It's because you want to pump damage, right? Well, 9.1 is here, and this damage has never been better. In today's video, we're going to be breaking down some of the most important changes in 9.1, giving you all the updates you need to set up your Discipline Priest for Season 2. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skill Capped. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry level guide, including our world-class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your Disc Priest gameplay up to the level of a pro. There, you'll find videos on on how to heal, CC, use cooldowns, and exactly how to execute your playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever-evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill-capped members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server, where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. Starting off, let's go over some of the biggest changes to disc in 9.1. On the PvE side, there weren't many changes other than a nerf to the clear mind conduit and to spirit shell, which really isn't used in PvP anyway. On the PvP side, that's where things get really interesting, because right out of the gate, atonement healing transfer was increased by 20% in PvP. This came with a redesign to the Trinity Talent, which previously had this effect but now only increases atonement duration and crit chance on a few spells. What this means is that Trinity is no longer a necessary PvP talent because its previous primary effect is now baseline. Ultimate Radiance was also changed in the patch, now being 150% increased healing down from 250%. This is huge. Radiance during Season 1 was a massive part of Priest healing, giving them an instant cast burst heal to press out of CC. Now that it is nerfed, it is no longer a default PvP talent for Disc, fundamentally changing the way the spec is played and opening up some new talent options. One of those is Inner Light and Shadow, which gives an ability that cycles through two different buffs, one to increase damage and atonement transfer and the other to reduce the mana cost of spells. Another new class-wide addition is improved Mass Dispel, reducing the cast time on MD, which honestly won't see much play for anything other than Shadow Priest. Searing Light was also redesigned, previously increasing smite damage and reducing the cooldown of Penance. Now called Blaze of Light, it increases damage of smite and penance while causing penance to slow targets by 40%. Sins of the Many also received a huge buff. Previously, this talent was reduced by 66% in PvP, but now it isn't reduced at all. This means that this priest will be doing more damage and because of atonement, more damage means more healing. So to recap, the meta is shifting away from bursty instant cast radiance heals towards a more damage and atonement based playstyle. This falls in line with many of the other fundamental PvP-wide changes this patch, making the game more lethal overall. 9.1 didn't really rebalance any racial abilities, so your best options are pretty much the same for both factions. For Alliance, Night Elf and Human are still your best options. Night Elf is arguably a bit more useful, since having Shadow Meld gives you a well-rounded tool in PvP. Not only can it be used to avoid casts and immune CC, but it can also be used to get off really clutch drinks, which is important since mana can be an issue in longer games. There's still an argument to be made for human however, since having an additional stun break is really nice given how common stun effects are in Arena. If you only plan on playing Jungle Cleave or RMP, then human might work really well for you, since your team is probably tanky enough on their own that you can benefit from running with a Relentless Trinket. But with 9.1 looking like an incredibly fast meta, we recommend Night Elf for most people. For Horde, Undead remains the best race by far. With the buffs to every Warlock spec, we expect to see a huge increase in the amount of fear effects in Arena, making Will of the Forsaken a much needed Needed asset. And that's pretty much it. The other races really can't compare, so if you plan on taking PvP seriously, we highly recommend going undead for Horde. Now let's move on to your best talents for 9.1, which haven't changed much since our last update. Castigation is still your best talent for your first row, giving you an additional tick of penance during its channel. With the buff to damage this patch, Penance is now even better for damage-based atonement healing and is even good by itself as a burst heal. You might want to consider Twist of Fate in some matchups however, specifically ones with massive CC chains like RMP and Hunter melee comps. The reason for this is that it will give you a much easier time topping your teammates off once you leave crowd control. Body and Soul should still be your default talent choice in your second tier, but you should still swap it out for masochism when you are fairly sure you will be trained. This is especially the case in 2v2 against melee teams. The extra healing it provides will always outweigh the speed bonus from the other options. For your third tier, Power Word Solace is by far your best choice. It is the most mana efficient option on this tier and provides you with consistent damage to convert to healing through atonement. You can play 
mind bender in some matchups especially if you want to be as aggressive as possible since his DPS is higher than Solace in shorter games. You might also choose it into sub rogue since your mind bender can help keep you in combat to prevent mid game saps. In a majority of cases, Psychic Voice is the best option on your force tier. Having a lower cooldown on fear is really important in setup based comps like RMP where you want to be cross CCing as often as possible. Shining Force is an alternative option that can have value into melee cleaves especially on Z axis maps like Blade's Edge. Being able to knock melee back can be a better defensive tool than having a reduced cooldown fear especially if you will be trained or if you plan to play in the backline the entire game. Your next 3 talents should never be swapped in arena. Sins of the Many, Purge the Wicked and Lenient are always your best talents. Sins of the Many was actually buffed in 9.1, now causing this to deal even more damage based on atonement buffs. Season 2 introduced a complete rework to the PvP talent system and now you have a few new choices. If you're looking for a good default set of PvP talents, right now you get the most bang for your buck with Blaze of Light, Inner Light and Shadow, and Dome of Light. With healing being more atonement focused, Blaze of Light is really strong since it gives you more damage on some of your main damaging spells. Inner Light and Shadow is a new addition in the patch which gives you an ability to cycle through two different buffs, one to complement your strengths by increasing damage and atonement healing and the other to address your weakness by reducing using the mana cost of spells. Dome of Light is your final default choice since it also helps address a big weakness of this priest which is not having a reliable damage mitigation cooldown. You might be thinking, wait, I thought Pain Suppression was your best defensive CD. Well, considering that it only provides 40% damage mitigation on a 3 minute cooldown, it is much weaker than the options other healers have. Dome of Light helps address this giving you 50% AoE damage reduction on a 1.5 minute CD. Purification is one of your situational PvP talents being a good option into many mage teams. Having an extra dispel helps deny polymorph spam from the enemy team, keeping your team more active during kill setups. Archangel is an often overlooked PvP talent that helps tremendously against teams with high sustained damage. It can be used as a recovery tool into teams like Warrior Shadow Priest which do constant damage while occasionally using instant cast CC. It also refreshes the duration of your atonement giving you more mana efficiency overall. Dark Archangel is your PvP talent that recently graduated from art school. Not really having a stable place in arena but occasionally finding itself a gimmicky job in certain matchups. This is your most aggressive talent choice and works well when you are playing really bursty setups like Red Warrior or RMP. And speaking of gimmicks, Thought Steel is another situationally valuable option, especially into Mage Rogue in 3v3 and especially 2v2. Stealing Polymorph can completely ruin their kill setups all while giving your team an additional win condition. It is also a really aggressive option into Resto Druid since it steals Rejuvenation which effectively denies their entire healing rotation. Ultimate Radiance is still good despite being heavily nerfed in 9.1. Having an instant cast burst heal is really good in matchups where you will set a lot of CC and need a way to instantly top your partners once you are free. So consider using it into RMP or even into comps like TSG where you will likely be trained and need more healing options to avoid hard casting and tanking interrupts. Finally, despite its changes in 9.1, there is still a place for Trinity in 3v3. You should never run this talent in 2v2 since part of its effect only works when Atonement is on 3 or more allies. With that in mind, it might be good into spell cleaves with spread pressure since increasing the duration of Atonement will give you more mana efficiency when multiple targets are constantly taking damage. Your best covenant is still the same in 9.1 with Venthyr likely being optimal for the remainder of the expansion. With increased damage and atonement healing, Mind Games has even more value going into Season 2. It is your hardest hitting ability, therefore being your best atonement heal. Of course, its main use is not necessarily its healing, but its healing reversal on enemy players. With increased healing reduction effects in Arena this patch, expect to see lots of wins from Mind Games alone. Door of Shadows is also incredibly strong as this priest since your limited movement can hinder your ability to land fears or escape enemy damage. This helps circumvent that by giving you a way to teleport onto enemy players to land clutch fears. The only covenant that might be able to compete with Venthyr later on is Night Fae due to its Fae Guardian's ability. This spell allows you to reset cooldowns on your teammates which might be really strong in comps like RMP where your focus is to gradually wear down at the enemy team's defenses by using your cooldowns. But for now, if you plan on playing Priest competitively in 9.1, we highly recommend sticking to Venthyr. The Soulbind system was expanded in the patch having new abilities and conduit slots added with increased renown levels. Nadia the Mistblade did see a nerf to the familiar predicament Soulbind ability which previously granted 25% reduced duration to interrupts now only giving 15%. Theotar the Mad Duke continues to be your best choice in Season 2, having some of the most useful options to accompany your offensive damage based playstyle. Since Atonement is now a better 
better source of healing in Arena, Theotar's Soothing Shade buff has more value overall this patch, giving you a huge mastery increase when it procs. The other Soulbind abilities for Theotar aren't too exciting, but Wash the Shoes is super helpful for landing Door of Shadows Fierce, while Token of Appreciation and its always tea time give you damage mitigation overall. An expanded Soulbind system means more conduits, so let's go over your best options in the new patch. Swift Penitence, Pain Transformation, and Exaltation are your main potency conduits going into 9.1. The only time you would ever swap one of these is if you are playing Ultimate Radiance, in which case you would sub out Exaltation. Note that some Conduit abilities are now correctly affected by dampening, meaning that Pain Transformation healing might be reduced the longer the game goes on. For Endurance Conduits, your best choices are Light's Inspiration and Translucent Image. Since you're incredibly vulnerable to getting trained, you really don't ever want to swap these out, as they will give you increased defenses when under direct pressure. As far as Finesse Conduits are concerned, your best choices are Move with Grace or Clear Mind, depending on your matchup. Move with Grace will have much more value into double melee setups since there aren't as many things to dispel. On the other hand, Clear Mind might be better into double caster teams or resto druids, especially if you're playing with Purification. Note that in 9.1, the effect of this conduit was reduced by 25%. Gearing has changed slightly in 9.1, including the addition of some optional pieces from Sanctum of Domination. All Season 2 PvP gear will now scale up 13 eye levels anytime you are in instance PvP, meaning your unranked conquest pieces will have a base eye level of 220 and a PvP eye level of 233. Gear can still be upgraded based on rating up to rank 5 once you reach 2100 in any bracket. You will still need honor to upgrade every piece with weapons costing the most to upgrade. Now though, you will need to win at least one game to upgrade to the highest ranking available. For the most part, you should focus gearing primarily with conquest points, getting capped every week and then looting your vault every Tuesday. Prioritize buying your weapon the first week it is available as it will give you the biggest power level increases. And as a reminder, your stat priority is still intellect, then versatility, haste, mastery, and crit in that order. You should base your conquest purchases on whatever gives you the highest intellect and versatility increases, focusing on gear that has both haste and versatility. For trinkets, having a medallion is essential and we highly recommend using an emblem trinket despite their nerfs in 9.1, since it gives you a huge increase to your primary stat and will give you an additional defensive cooldown when you get trained. If you want to play more aggressively in 2v2, or if you are playing a caster creep in 3v3, you might want to consider the new Gladiator Shackles trinket as it might catch enemy teams off guard. The Insignia trinket is also an alternative option since it has loads of haste and a massive damage increase on proc. There are some new PvE gear you can get from Sanctum of Domination that has special sockets for new gems called Shards of Domination. These effects will be nerfed by 50% in PvP, so they aren't completely necessary in Arena. If you manage to get your hands on a piece of gear with a shard socket, just make sure it has versatility on it. Otherwise, your Conquest PvP gear is probably better. But please, don't sweat it. You won't need this new gear to be competitive. If you get it, great. If you don't, well, no worries. Although some new legendaries were added in the patch, your best choices are largely the same. Cephus is still a solid pick regardless of matchup, not only because you will sit less CC but also you get a huge boost to your secondary stats, increasing both your damage output and atonement healing. Crystalline Reflection, which is sometimes called Reflective Shield, is an alternative option that works exceptionally well in 2v2 for maximizing your damage output. It is important to know that its reflected damage interacts with Atonement, giving you a slight boost to your healing. Finally, in matchups where you are playing Ultimate Radiance, you might want to consider using the Penitent one. This can be used to empower your Penance after a Radiance, giving you the option to do some quick burst damage or healing. Finally, let's go over some of the macros that you should get comfortable using if you really want to min-max as this priest. One of the most useful macros to have as any healer is a party 1-2 for your dispel. These should be put on similar keybinds, allowing you to quickly dispel you or your partners out of CC. And since you're going to be casting a lot of damage in arena, you can make some macros to assist your teammates, so you don't have to constantly swap between enemy and friendly targets while using damage or healing. By putting an at harm and at target target command with some of your damaging spells, you can target your teammates for heals while assisting them with damage on the target they're attacking. You can do this with all of your damaging spells including Power Word Solace, Smite, Penance, and Mind Games. Finally, we highly recommend making a Shadow Word Death Macro that includes a stop casting command both for your target and for your focus. Having a stop casting command helps ensure that you aren't accidentally casting while trying to death, therefore increasing the chance that your death will be successful. And there you have it, this priest healing has changed quite dramatically in 9.1, but with some minor adjustments you can be ready for the competition in Season 2. 
If you are looking to push rating this season, consider checking out skillcap.com slash wow where we will be updating our class courses and arena commentaries for season 2. In the meantime, make sure to subscribe below to stay up to date on all future uploads. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon!